So when we're evaluating businesses that have been submitted to sell with us, right, we take a look at a bunch of things. Um, but first we put them through what we call our valuation tool. An evaluation tool looks, our valuation tool looks at, you know, how old the business is, uh, what the trajectory is, uh, what the net profits are, kind of like where the business is at, and we'll give you a range. So I mentioned earlier, evaluation is based on a multiple of net profit, and I'll use the same example, that 40,000 a month in sales, 20,000 cost of goods, and 10,000 in expenses, that leaves you 10,000 a month in profit. You're gonna get a valuation and a multiple that's generally between, let's say, 25 and 35X, right? Now we'll talk about outside of those ranges, um, but let's just stick to that for now, 25 to 35. So that's the difference between a $250,000 business and a $350,000 business. And you might ask me, I'm like, well, that's a big range, man. How <laughs> do I make it 350 instead of 250? I want $100,000 more. Um, well, there's a whole bunch of things that go into that. So at the upper end of that range would be a business that's been around a little longer. It's got a few years of history. So you've got, you know, year over year growth. It's either stable or still increasing, you know, quarter over quarter and year over year. Um, it's also got uh, some diversity in terms of uh, where the traffic or the customers are coming in. So how you're acquiring those customers isn't through just one channel. There may be multiple channels. You might have multiple products, so you're not you know, singly uh, um, you know, uh, stuck with one particular product that may or may not be successful next year. So you've got some diversity on the product side. Um, uh, you know, if you're in e-commerce, uh, I'd say multi-channel e-commerce is generally more valuable to get you a better valuation. What I mean by multi-channel is maybe you're selling a little bit on, on Amazon. So you're doing the fulfillment by Amazon, but you're also getting customers and selling product through your own e-commerce store. So having those two channels is going to be better than just one, uh, either just the e-commerce store yourself or just FBA. Um, because single channels provide more risk. Ultimately, what gives you the higher multiples or the higher valuation um, is going to be what looks less risky to a buyer. The buyers are going to buy the business and either maintain it or grow it over the next few years. And if they think that is at risk in any way, they may still buy your business, but they're going to want it at a lower multiple. They're going to want it. They're going to want a discount. And so what you want to do as a seller is you want to avoid them looking for those discounts or, or having opportunities to get those discounts uh, and to be in kind of the upper threshold of the valuation range. Okay, this, this is some interesting things that you've, you've covered here. Uh, and it's, it's good to know some of these in advance uh, as we're maybe not, we're not ready to sell now, but it's good to know so that we can um, set up the business in the right way and prepare it so it's not that headache at the end when there's a rush to sell or you're urgent to sell and um, then obviously one, you're not going to get the best price. One thing I'll mention, Liam, is that uh, you know the net profit of the business is generally based on the trailing 12 months. So if you're looking to sell a business and you're looking to sell, let's say, a year from now, you should know that the clock has started in terms of uh, you know, what your valuation is gonna be and what your net profit looks like. So any changes you can make to your profit between now and the next 12 months are gonna have a significant impact in your valuation. So some of the things could be things like, a look at your recurring costs. I mean, are, do you really still need that you know, software subscription for 600 bucks a month? Is that critical? Um, can you consolidate some of the jobs down into one person? Um, you know, ways to kind of like, you know, a decrease uh, spend that will improve profitability is going to have a direct impact on your profit. What you don't want to do is you don't want to cut revenue though. So even if you can improve your margin a bit, if you're cutting revenue, that may be bad for the business. So don't cut anything out that is directly related to top line either. So